If you haven't yet joined the plastic revolution, I totally understand. It took for me to go fishing with Gaz Fairham and get beaten up by him. He was getting bite after bite and I was catching nothing. I couldn't get my head around not having a real bit of food on the end, but believe me, it works. And Enterprise Tackle have to take the credit for bringing this onto the market. And now everybody that I know fishes with it almost every time they go fishing. So let's have a look at my favorites. Um, you can't beat this, two bits of plastic corn, just on a short hair there, that's a little size eight wide gape, number six shot, hybrid soft hook link, and it'll just sit up just like that. When I'm spotting and I'm fishing with hemp and corn and a bit of chopped boilie, that is my number one approach, especially if there's a little bit of weed on the bottom. And then if you want to use a bigger hook, that's a couple of grains of maize, um, because it's bigger, that floats just a little bit better than the corn, so you can get away with a bigger hook. A size six Y gape like that would sink two bits of corn, which if you want to fish it critically balanced, is great. But if you want to fish it popped up, you need to move over to a couple of bits of maize. So they're my pop-up rigs. Another great way to take advantage of the plastic corn is to tip off a standard bottom bait, a bit of real food as it were, with a bit of plastic. And the combinations here are literally endless. So I'll talk you through the first one. That fellow at the front there is a 15mm dumbbell hook bait with a bit of glow-in-the-dark plastic. So when it gets dark, you, that will glow a beautiful sort of bright green colour. You can charge it up with a torch if you want to. I never bother. And it's weird. Some places you find that that will get you your first bite at night. I don't know why. And then you can swap the other rods to it, obviously, and get loads more bites. But that really does work on certain waters. I know people that have used that for zig rig fishing on mini zigs on shallow lakes, perhaps three, four foot deep. They're fishing a three foot zig with two grains of that. No other bait in the swim and it's roaring off where nothing else is happening. So don't ignore the glow in the dark stuff. And then a lovely bit of pink on the end there. There's loads of different colors you can get. Again, some places just respond to certain colors. And what this is doing in every situation, you imagine the fish are coming into the swim and you've got loads of boilies out there and they're sifting off different ones. And there's a little tiny pinhead of color in the middle of the baited spot. More often than not, that's going to attract them. So the fish come in, oh, what's that? They pick that one up and that's attached to the hook. You know, and that's why colour is so important. You can use different colours on different rods. One may stand out from the others, and then you'll get all your, put all your rods onto that one and obviously you get loads more bites. All this stuff takes flavour as well. So you can buy them flavoured. The pineapple butyric one in yellow is probably my favourite out of the whole range, but you can buy several different other flavours, including tutti frutti. Um, I can put my own flavours in as well. If I just pour a little tiny bit of flavour into either a little jar or a bag and just put some unflavoured stuff in there and just just move it around inside the bag and just leave it for a few days and that concentrated flavour will penetrate into the corn and in the end every time you pull it out you can smell it after I've used it a little while I'll put it back in the bag reflavour it and just use a new bit now this one if you're fishing abroad and you've got any problem with crayfish or poisson char that is a great little way to fish it so I've meshed up my boilie there uh, with a bit of nylon mesh and my hair stopper, if you like, is that bit of very brightly coloured maize. That's a great colour as well, that lime green. I've got in there um, a little extender stop that's pulled up inside that bit of maize. So there's no way a poisson char or a crayfish can get that off. That will stay on there until you get a bite. Now the nice thing about bottom bait fishing with these on the end is the buoyancy of this almost counteracts the weight of the hook. So it's going to go in their mouth just that little bit easier than a standard bottom bait. Another good little tip. Right, tiger nuts. This is the tiger nut, believe it or not, that I've just, I've just shaved all the skin off the tiger nut to expose the white flesh, just to give it a little bit more attraction. And then on the top of it, I've put a bit of white corn. White seems to be a brilliant color as well. Again, it's taking the weight of the hook away. And you imagine there's a bed of tigers out there and hemp and stuff, and there's one little bit of white or two little bits of white if you're fishing two rods on the spot. As the fish come in, oh, what's that? They go down for it whack you've got them so another great way tipping off any bottom bait with a bit of corn you have to test them in the edge obviously to make sure that they're not popping up too much but that's a great way to take advantage of it now the next one is the all singing all dancing kd rig that we've been raving about recently we've got a curved shank hook on there and then on the first one we've got two grains of corn which are obviously buoyant and on the hair we've got a number four shot squeezed on and the way that's going to sit on the bottom is literally just like that so the shot is just counteracting the buoyancy of the baits and effectively making the bait weightless 
So it goes into the, into the mouth very, very easily, but it doesn't stop the hook from turning and catching hold. You'll see on all my other rigs, if I've got some weight to the hook bait, the hair will actually be coming off the hook down here, which basically you're making the point of the hook heavy. Because this is weightless, you don't want it attached to that end of the hook. You want it attached to almost the eye of the hook. So that KD rig will help that to happen. It actually makes the, the eye of the hook light, which in turn makes the point of the hook heavy. And another great fake bait from Enterprise is the plastic tigers. Again, slightly buoyant, fishing that over a few tigers and a bit of hemp, or literally just on its own. Now Ian Russell rates this as one of my, if I really need to get a bite, this is what I put on baits. So well worth trying that. They do peanuts as well for fishing over the top of peanuts or any particle. Great little rig. Combine the KD rig with a bit of buoyant Enterprise floating corn or a tiger, and you're gonna get loads of bites on that. So we continue. This is little bits of trickery that uh, Ali's tied up for me. Um, I'll put all three of those on there. They're all tied on, on the Supernatural. I've been using the coated material, the hybrid soft for the other rigs, but this is when it's really getting tough and you think the fish are preoccupied on tiny, tiny food items. So there, we've got a couple of grains of sinking hemp and then a little tiny bit of micro corn, which is floating. So when that sits on the bottom, it sits with the point facing down. So if you're fishing over hemp and you're not, you're not getting any bites on boilies because they're switched onto the hemp, you can try a little bit of trickery like that and that'll probably get you extra bites. And then the, the famous MAGA liner that Mr. Rob Malian has made famous and loads of people have caught lots of fish on. That's a the little tiny maggot there. He's slightly buoyant. The other two, which are brand new, they're sinkers. I mean, that looks so much like a maggot, it's ridiculous. These fish are feeding on sight. There's a big bag of maggots out there that's burst open. There's maggots everywhere, and that's flying up into their mouth. There's no idea that there's any hook there or anything from the fish's point of view, because it's completely covered up by the artificial baits. And you'll notice there on these hook links, we've got another new bit of trickery on there. That's a little hook link weight. Looks like a float stop, but it's actually tungsten mixed with rubber. So that's heavy, and that's gonna sink that hook link straight down to the bottom immediately. So a great little addition to any rig, and they're gonna be out by the time this DVD hits your tackle shops. And then finally, if you're fishing over a bag of pellets, is another little bit of trickery from Ali here. We've got a floating pellet, and then a bit of corn that doubles as a hair stop. So no hair stop on there. Again, that makes it very difficult for any kind of nuisance fish to get it off. And that's just gonna sit like that, fished with a bag of pellets, funnel web bag, about golf ball size, especially on those waters where pellets are used a lot that's gonna get you a lot of bites. So that's just a brief introduction into the baits that Enterprise do. There are loads of others that you can choose from. Flavor them, chop them up, use different colors. They'll definitely get you more bites.